starting the coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee on a Monday morning at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started. But first, Bustello, Cafe Bustello instant coffee with a little bit of cream and some honey. Always good. We don't need no education. We don't need no thought control. No dark sarcasm from the capital. Politician, leave them kids alone. Hey, elected official, leave them kids alone. All in all, you're just another brick in the wall. I have to laugh at this. My daughter says this to me. Kanye West defends punching a man who wanted an autograph. He's quoted as saying that blue COVID mask didn't stop that knockout. <laughs> oh my God. I, you know, it's funny. My daughter and I have the same sense of humor. The same sense of humor. That is just way too funny. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will succeed. Proverbs 16.3. Not succeeding? Maybe you need to do some committing to the Lord. Could be a possibility, right? That's not a suggestion. I recall a funny moment from about 10 years ago. I was about 51 at the time. While at the gym, a woman passes me at the gym and says, look at you, mister, her exact words. Look at you, mister. You wouldn't happen to like older women, do you? And I started laughing, and it was kind of a funny moment. I said, why? How old are you? She was obviously older. She says, I'm 84. I'm going to be 85 on Friday. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. I just want to say happy birthday to everybody who's going to have a birthday this year. Okay, let me just check that off my list now. What are your favorite methods of making coffee? What do you like? Are you an espresso person? Are you percolator? Are you Mr. Coffee drip coffee maker? Are you cowboy coffee? What are you? What is your what are your favorite methods? Starting with your number one. Give me your top three methods of making coffee. Put your answer down below. I did a video some time ago called Is There Hope for the Modern Woman? and a subscriber left a great comment and said, for the men out there, we do need you. And it's easy to see that we have tried to make the majority more feminine when your real gift to us is being men. Step into it so that we don't keep giving ourselves more reasons to step into our masculine. I look forward to seeing you men shine. I love that. Absolutely love that. That's consistent with what I've taught for years. That, guys, if you don't step up to the plate, your woman is going to despise you. She does not want to be the rock. You need to do it. You need to step up to the plate. As this subscriber said, step into it. I like that. No quicker way to make a woman despise you than to leave decision-making up to her than not leading or having somewhere to lead her to. That's why I say, gentlemen, you need to vet a woman for her ability and propensity to want to build. That way you never just end up staring at each other at the dinner table in silence because you're on a mission. You're not without words. You know, when when the honeymoon is over, what do you have left? So many videos are men teaching other men how to do well with women. You want to do well with women? Do well as a man, period. Don't become more like a woman to get a woman or to please a woman. There's no quicker way to get despised in your relationship or marriage. 
There's wisdom in that, gentlemen. And I know the women that are watching this right now are going, Amen, Amen. I can't even begin to tell you how many women have written me. And this is not my criteria for success. Because this is not a channel for women. This is a channel for men. But women who say this to me, they write me, they email me, and they say these exact words. I know your channel is for men, but I really like what you teach. It resonates with me, and I wish more men would watch your channel. Or I forward, forwarded your videos to my son, or to my brother, or to my ex-husband. I hate to say the phrase man up, but there is there's wisdom in manning up. And I know that sounds offensive. You know, a coach, if a coach said that today, let's say there's a football coach and uh, he's working with a bunch of players and one guy's kind of falling short and the coach says, come on, man up. Did you know that guy could get fired from his job for saying man up? That's considered offensive in this day and age. I say, shout it from the friggin' mountaintops. Basically, it boils down to this. Mainstream media versus truth-based media. Mainstream media is not the truth. When I stopped watching the news, probably about five years ago, literally just stopped it, and that eventually led to me stopping watching television altogether except for a movie on Netflix or something like that. And most of the time, they're independent films and not Hollywood blockbusters with weird agenda from weird executive producers trying to control opinions and attitudes and deliver subliminal messages. You know that's being done. You don't have to be a genius or a conspiracy theorist to figure that out. Truth-based or liberty-based media. It's not happening on cable news. I don't care. Yeah, but, you know, Newsmax is good. Newsmax is bullshit. Sorry. They're part of the agenda as well. I don't listen to one second of Newsmax. Everybody thought, oh, it's an alternative to Fox. Bullshit. It's the same garbage, the same swill. Turn it off. How many legs does a dog have if you call its tail a leg? Four. Because calling something a name that it's not doesn't make it that thing. And I know in bizarro world, clown world, upside down, morally inverse world, everything is the opposite. You know better than that. Some people think if you hear something long enough that eventually it's going to be that thing. Sorry. It is a scientifically proven fact that when you see the words, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave, that you automatically play the entire double lead guitar riff in your head. Am I right? Stephen Stills was looking at Judy Collins in the studio as he sang the summation of their relationship in the song Sweet Judy Blue Eyes which was about to end. The relationship was about to end. His joy of having her and the pain of losing her came out in the first take. Chestnut brown canary, ruby-throated sparrow, sing a song, don't be long, thrill me to the marrow. That was in 1969.
waste zero time on events, people, or work that doesn't give a tangible return. Sure, you might feel good or important for five minutes, but no one does themselves any favors by increasing the legend in their own mind factor. I'm not belittling the feel-good aspect of things, but thinking it will get you somewhere or that you will be found by some entity that will change your life is absolutely delusional. From a pure business point of view, it's a bad investment. Hanging out with people, events, or groups to get somewhere, what a waste of time. Do your own thing. What was that song? It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Remember that? Who wrote that song? Put the answer down below. Just the sound of the news can actually make you sick by increasing stress and lowering your immune response. It is a 100% biological response to chaos. News is basically a fear delivery system, a chaos delivery system. Think about it. Put on Bob Ross or Mr. Rogers. Case in point, see if you feel different after watching Bob Ross than you do after watching the news. You Literally, you will feel better physically and mentally. The news can make you sick by increasing your stress and lowering your immune response. The news is not like what it used to be. It's always kind of sucked. It's always been agenda-driven. But the reality is this, and you know this to be true. How many times do you find yourself yelling at the TV or talking back to the TV? Right? Talking back to an, an inanimate object hanging on your wall or sitting on a TV stand. Talking back to the president, yelling back at a politician. Listening to some bullshit from the CDC. Right? Don't put yourself in a position to make yourself upset. The fear delivery system is not your friend. So why do you keep doing it? It's like the guy who's taking a hammer and just hitting himself with it. And another guy says, why are you doing that? And his reply is, because it feels good when I stop. You are deliberately harming your mind by watching the news. Nellie Bowles writes this article in the New York Times. The sperm kings have a problem. Too much demand. What? Many people want a pandemic baby, but some sperm banks are running low. So women are joining unregulated Facebook groups to find willing donors. No middleman required. Holy crap. Even more now with the purebloods. Amazing, isn't it? One guy replies, he says, I distinctly remember something like this happened years ago. A simp male donated sperm to some lesbian friends of his. After the child was born, the lesbians broke up and the one who carried the baby sued the male for child support and won. Holy crap. Hmm. Liquid gold. Last week I told you how to make yourself irreplaceable. And some people disagreed with that. There's no way. You know, everyone is replaceable. And, and I get that. I understand that. Okay. But... How about this? Who you work for is replaceable. Who you work for is replaceable. Don't be afraid to give the big giant middle finger to an employer. Don't be afraid. Usually you work for low IQ idiots who try to lord things over you. This is why I want you to be increasingly independent. 
increasingly independent. I'm creating a course about that and about what works after years of doing it myself. Out on the road today, I saw a deadhead sticker on a Cadillac. A little voice inside my head said, don't look back. You can never look back. Those are brilliant lyrics. That was from Don Henley, The Boys of Summer, 1984. I remember when that song came out. It was so catchy. Can you believe that was 1984? I love this psalm, Psalm 3418, from the ESV English Standard Version. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. So many people have lost people suddenly or through illness in the past couple years for one reason or another. And I will tell you this. Hear these words. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Let those words bring you life. And with that, finish your coffee, and I'll see you on the next Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason. Hi, my name is Erin. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a 